Enswes Truck Trailer RV. My name's Mark Love, and today I'm going to be showing you a used unit that we have. Uh, this is a 2019 Forest River Sunseeker. Uh, stock number on this one to get started is 5U211469. Now, Forest River, like all the manufacturers, build on the Sprinter platform. This is a, a Mercedes uh, diesel engine. It's your six-cylinder, three-liter V6. Uh, I'm not going to show you the engine. We've, we've shown you so many. You know where the blinker fluid is and everything else. But it is a 188 horsepower, 325 foot-pounds of torque. And this is probably the best platform for your smaller Class C motorhomes. Uh, the reason I say that, number one, the Sprinter is it's a great platform, a great engine. They probably run 250 to 300,000 miles with proper maintenance. These were built originally as a delivery vehicle for FedEx and UPS, and that's why they chose them. And secondly, they're extremely comfortable to drive. The ergonomics, the seats, everything about them. Uh, and then when you compare your fuel mileage to what you might get on a Ford Class C, which typically is going to be 8 to 10, we're probably looking more in the 14 to 16 miles per gallon range on the diesel Sprinter. So there's just a lot of good things about them. Very popular platform. And again, this is a 2019 with that Sprinter engine. Uh, let's walk around this side and point out some of the storage compartments first. Uh, this one happens to be a double slide unit, uh, one on the side and then one out the rear. Over here, this is just access to your propane tank. You do have a six gallon water heater, a three burner propane stove, and the refrigerator is actually uh, an RV or a camping refrigerator, which means it runs on both propane and 110 electricity. Uh, down here, this is just access to your dumps. So you'd run your tube up through the bottom. You could dump your black and gray right here. For anybody that's a newcomer, generally you want to dump the black tank first. Uh, once that's emptied, then you open up your gray tank. That soapy water kind of helps wash out the, uh, the solid waste. And then right here we just have a little storage compartment for that, uh, that sewer hose. Uh, moving back here, uh, you've got your, your 30 amp uh, marine cord cable input or maybe you're using a portable satellite, something like that. Uh, you have a flush over here and then a city water connection. If you go to an RV park where you have uh, city water, once you hook your hose up, you're pressurized. You don't need to worry about filling your tank or using your 12-volt pump. You can run off your city water pressure. However, if you do need to fill your tank, right here is your tank fill. And like pretty much every unit these days, you do get an outside shower. This is just a little spray port that hooks up here. Okay, one of the nice things about this floor plan is the storage you get all the way through. And let me open up a couple of these and show you from this side. Now, this passes all the way through. You can see they, they have the nice rotocast uh, uh, liners in here for your holding tanks. You actually do have a drain here. So uh, if you wanted to hose it out for some reason, you get a lot of sand or mud in there, you can clean it out really easily. Right here is access to your water pump. And the reason I point that out, some of you are going to winterize yourself. You have to have access to the inlet side of that pump to uh, put it into your, your, um, your uh, winterization tank. Or, excuse me, ah, there we go. So it's easy to access that when you're putting your antifreeze in. And then you can see you've got your bypass valve right here. Uh, that bypasses your water heater. So, like I say, if you're going to winterize it yourself, they made it easy to access. 
and then over on this side again just more storage and you can see it's open to the compartment we just had and it passes all the way through for some reason they have a new set of cushions for your dinette here so not sure what that's all about but you got some brand new cushions in there as we come around the back and again I pointed out this has got a, a back slide this is your bed here but you know it's it's not hard to access this it's not too low for you and again you can see this is a full pass-through compartment so you've got great storage in this unit it does have your two inch tow hitch and one of the things that I noticed about the Forest River they rate their hitch and towing capacity at 7,000 pounds where typically it's going to be 5,000 pounds on most of these uh, here's your seven-way plug and then you also have a propane quick connect over here so if you want to hook in an outside grill it's really easy to access we move around on this side again that same storage compartment so you can see how much room you have and and the ability to access it from three sides again you've got a little drain plug there so if you do want to hose it out it's very easy to clean here we have our 3.6 and this is an LP generator uh, it runs off your propane generally on a Mercedes you're either going to have the propane or a diesel generator the diesels are an option that cost you know four or five thousand more typically uh, this one has the LP one but it's got a little larger propane tank here so you've got a uh, you know plenty of propane to stay out for a week and not worry about running out uh, another thing I'll point out here first of all great 16 foot awning covers the whole side and that is an electric awning I'm not sure if this one's wind censored or not in 2019 it could be strictly manual just don't leave it out if you go for a hike or something make sure you close it and then one other thing you see down here there's stabilizer jacks on the rear now a lot of people confuse stabilizer jacks with leveling jacks and I'm, I'm going to show you the difference a little bit about what this does. Stabilizer jacks are just to firm up the coach once you get into your site. You typically are still going to have to level uh, your tires. And I'm going to lift this back one up. You can see we're on a bit of a hill here. And as I take that stabilizer jack off, not only will it rock around more, as you uh, are inside but you know we're on a little bit more of a slope you can take part of that slope out you might be able to you know adjust it half a bubble let's say on your level but these aren't levelers they don't have the four point levelers which would automatically fully level the coach so stabilizer jacks some of them have cranked down old-fashioned this is an electric one there is a difference and I just thought I'd point that out to you uh, one last storage compartment here and this is a pretty good size one again you can see with the drain there and uh, being a little bit old school this has got a six gallon propane water heater that's what this is this is the back of your refrigerator and again that'll run on propane with your 12 volt battery or when you're plugged in you can run it on electric and this is your furnace exhaust here well I think that covers the outside why don't we step in and take a look at the floor plan one of the things that I like about this is it is equipped standard with your sway control bar and that's something that on these Mercedes chassis if you've been on any of the forums you might hear them talk about uh, as you put this class C body on the back they get a little bit more top heavy you get a little bit more sway in them they don't come from Mercedes with the sway control but this one does so that's a nice feature 
again, our, our Mercedes uh, cab area. And as I'm walking in here, I'm just going to flip this up. It makes it easier to get in and out. You don't feel like you're in such a cave when you're uh, driving. And again, it is a manual seat, but they're comfortable uh, uh, Euro leather or simulated leather seats. The ergonomics here, uh, very well. You've got, you know, your tilt and telescope on your wheel to get it just where you want. Uh, again, a, a standard dash, you have a backup monitor. Uh, this one does not appear to have the three-way cameras. I don't see the, the camera on the side. Um, if anybody can tell me what this is, I'll send you a TransWest hat. And I'll give you a clue. It wasn't put in there by Winnebago. It's standard from Mercedes. It has to do with the original purpose of this unit. Let's take a look at our overhead bunk. Now, actually, this is a queen bed, and it's the largest bed in this coach. And when you're going to sleep, you just flip this over. You do have a nice net here, and you've got a couple seatbelt type clips to clip in there. So if you've got a young child and you're worried about having a rail, uh, you can put that up. What we have here is our blackout screens for the front and for the side windows. So when it's time to sleep, you just put those up in the cab area. Does have your nice main TV here, which is on a swivel. And then of course you have your privacy curtain here. Not that you're gonna get much privacy in a 25 foot coach, but <laughs> at least you can uh, close it off and maybe make it a little darker. Over here, we've got a little cubby up here, and you can see there's uh, access to your TV input. Uh, maybe you're going to bring a, uh, you know, a portable satellite and put your box up there, DVD player and so forth. You do have a, a 110 outlet there. Here's your AM, FM radio with Bluetooth, and then again, a little more storage back here. This particular unit only has the the night shades, the MCD, and these are manual, they're not the electric ones. Look at the kitchen here, and, and uh, this sink, although it's only a single sink, it's very large. And uh, you get the residential style fixtures for cleaning things out. Now, on a, on a shorter coach, you don't get the counter space, but there's a nice flip up here. So if I am washing dishes here, you can put your, your rack, your strainer up here, or when you're prepping food, gives you a little bit extra area. This is a nice flush cover here. And then you have the three burner propane stove. This flips up, gets out of the way. This looks barely used. This coach really is in nice condition. And then behind your, uh, your stove here, you have a nice knife rack. Now, this is a rarity in the RV business. You have a real oven. So those of you that like to bake, that you know, like to do bigger meals, you have a regular propane oven, but you also get the convection microwave. And this is common with most units. They don't have ovens, just a convection. Anytime you see the metal inside, that lets you know it's a convection. Got a little bit of storage here. And then of course, underneath, place to put your trash can. And then there is a pull-out drawer. Also under there, you can see we, we have our furnace components, some of the electrical components. If you do need to access it, if you're the kind of person that does work on yourself, these drawers pull out. And then one other little bit larger drawer over here. Over on the driver's side of the coach, of course, we have our dinette table. 
Now this has the simple release. We'll push down, rest on these cleats uh, if you want to make it into a bed. So there's three sleeping spots here. Potentially could sleep six people, two on the uh, dinette, two in the main uh, bedroom, and then of course two in the overhead. And then here's some nice storage. This is open all the way through. And uh, you notice we've got manuals here. This contains some touch-up paint and some of the things you get from Forest River itself. There's a nice uh, skylight here. And of course, this skylight does have a, a cover for it. You also get a fantastic fan right here. These are a great uh, power vent fan that and, you know, if you're to open a window in the back, turn that on, it really draws a lot of air through here, helps keep it cooler at night. Okay, let's move back into the middle here. First of all, I was telling you, you have a camping refrigerator, I'd call it. This runs on propane and on 110 power. Uh, a lot of things you're seeing are going to residential refrigerators. They are a little bit bigger. They, they only run on 110, so you either have to have an inverter or be plugged in somewhere. But this is kind of the old school, I call it, where you've got your gas and your electric elements here. Control panel right here. So if you want to check your, your LP, your battery, you know, your gray tank, your black tank, by the way, this one has 30, uh, 35 or 36 gallons of fresh water, and then 30 on the black and gray tanks. And your generator start, you can see it's only had 41 hours of use right here. And then light switches, slide out switches, and so forth. Okay, I want to show the bathroom, and I'm going to step out of the way when I open it. I like the fact that they actually put the sink out here. Makes it a little narrower in here, but it gives you a little bit more room in the bathroom and you do have a separate standalone shower in there little storage over the toilet back there and then outside here again we have our undermount sink and a little medicine cabinet here. They do provide you with quite a few 110 outlets and there's a few USB ports throughout also. Across from your sink, we have our main uh, wardrobe storage. And there's also a nice drawer down below. Okay, I'll describe this a little bit, then let Jody step in and, and uh, show you around. But this is a slide out here. So as this bed comes in, your mattress telescopes over this part of the bed, and it comes all the way up. It's not something you'd really want to take a nap on, I would guess, when you're traveling, although a child or somebody small could sleep this way. And this is a double bed. I was saying that the... Uh, the overhead bunk is actually your largest bed. It's a nice uh, memory foam type mattress. And then you do have another shirt closet over here. And a storage drawer. And each side of the pedestal you have a 110 outlet and you have USB ports. Let me get out of the way and you can see where your TV is here. And then you also have your heater and air conditioner controls right here. You can see another 110 outlet and then your USB ports are down below. You get another uh, a vent here and like I say, if you were to open this vent, turn on your power vent, up front, you could draw a nice breeze through here at night. A nice, you know, solid door 
to give you some privacy if you want to close it off. So again, uh, a 2019 Forest River Sunseeker. It is a, a used unit. I think it's 17 or 18,000 miles. Uh, really a clean unit. Um, a great platform on that Mercedes, of course. And if you have questions on this or any of our units, please contact me. Here's my uh, contact information. Again, my name's Mark Love. My cell phone here, probably the best way, 970-631-0083. Uh, we're coming into winter here. It's a little chilly this morning, getting ready for our first snows before long. So, uh, you know, we still have a good amount of inventory available. If you're looking for a particular unit and you don't see it, call us, let us know, and we'll keep our eye out. We're buying units all the time. So uh, that's all for today. Drive safe out there. Like always, happy trails, my friends, and get out and see something. It's a great country.